So let's go ahead and fly through these presentation slides so we can get to the, the fun stuff. Uh, what are WebSockets? Uh, you've probably heard of them in some of your HTML5 presentations already, but the big things are highlighted in bold. Bidirectional, full duplex communications. So before WebSockets, we had to do something like Ajax polling or Comet or use Adobe you know, sockets from Flash. Those kind of things. If you wanted to get a real-time feed from the server or any kind of bidirectional communications with the server. Um, all of these had problems, latency problems. They had problems with the, the amount of bandwidth required per client the number of connections per client, all not really all that great. So they tried to solve that with WebSockets, which gives you pretty much a raw socket that you can fling strings across back and forth from the server to the client and back. So here's the API. Uh, there are, you create a new WebSocket, give it the URL, new protocol is WS or WSS, depending on if you want secure. Four methods for callbacks. On open, it'll let you know when it's ready to go. On close, don't talk to it anymore. On message is when the server has sent you a message. And on error, if something went wrong, it'll let you know. So browser support. I have the protocol here listed as previous and current. So the initial implementation had a problem with the handshake that uh, somebody discovered was a security problem because it allowed people to poison the cache on proxy servers along the way. So that's why I have it broken out here. Uh, the previous implementation, so it was supported in Firefox 4, Chrome, Safari, Opera, and iOS 4.2. Uh, the star means it was there and supported, but it was disabled by default because of the security issue. So the current implementation has fixed that security issue. Um, and these are the browsers that you'll find it in. So you also need a server-side component. Here are some options for Ruby. Um, the game that we were playing, the Who Wants to Be a Millionaire game, was written using Skinny in Ruby. Uh, the demo I'm about to do is using a WebSocket server for, uh, for Node.js. And let's go ahead and take a look at that. So I just have a simple web page that's going to connect to the server. I've created my WebSocket here, overridden my methods, and put out debug messages whenever an event happens. I'm going to have a little button and an input that you can actually send a message to the server so we can see the two-way communication going on. Let's look at the server implementation. This is the Node.js program. This is the entire program. This part sets up the web server. Nothing interesting except the static resources there for things like JavaScript, CSS, the HTML. This is the actual, that's it for the web services or web sockets implementation here. So we add a listener. So whenever a new connection comes in, it's going to give me a, a callback and pass me the connection. And that connection, I'm going to add a listener. So that whenever a message comes in, I'm going to log that out to the console. So let's go. All right. Node. So let's start up our server. All right, server started. So if I go ahead and connect these guys. So you'll see the two callbacks. Um, WebSocket connection open here, WebSocket connection open here. Also over in the window there, we saw we got two connections. The numbers are those connection IDs if you cared to track them that way. Um, we can go ahead from the server and broadcast a message to everyone saying, Hello, and you see both windows updated at the exact same time. They both got the message pushed from the server saying hello. We can send a message from the client, send back hi. So you can see message from client there. So we have these persistent connections. We can either send to a single client, to a subset of the clients, or to all the clients in one shot. They can also send messages back right away. Um, one of the things they were addressing here was bandwidth and connections per client. So all of the polling methods required two connections per client. This is one connection open. Um, the additional benefit is you don't have to deal with HTTP headers on every push of information. So this has a one byte padding in front and back of each frame. So you're dealing with two bytes of padding per, per message uh, instead of the full HTTP headers, um, which, is, which is way better as far as bandwidth goes. Uh, I think that's about it.